and welcome to the first episode in my 10-part series, Frontiers in Research. If you don't know who I am, I'm James Colvin, a fourth-year geoscience student at the University of Edinburgh. If you want more information, then you'll have to go back and look at my series introduction. In this episode, to kick us off in my 10-part series, we'll be talking about climate resilience and what geoscience within business has to do with it. What is this term, climate resilience, and what does it mean? As well as learning about that, we will also try and understand why geoscientists today are increasingly involved in developing resilience as our climate becomes more variable with time. The seminar I attended was led by Dr. Richard Tripper. Dr. Tripper is a co-founder of Ecometrica, a global leader in downstream data that turns the vast and growing streams of observation data from space, the atmosphere, and on land into coherent, meaningful information that can be of use to business, government and society. Climate resilience. What is it? Why do we need to understand it? Climate resilience can be understood as the capacity for a social ecological system to 1. Absorb stresses and maintain function in the face of external stresses imposed upon it by climate change. What this means, sort of based off the seminar, is does the system which we'll describe in a bit, have the ability to resist and cope to detrimental climactic events. These events could be recurring, such as drought or flood, or could be one in a hundred years, like a massive tsunami or a huge storm. Uh, and two, does the social ecological system have the capacity to adapt, reorganize, and evolve into a more desirable configurations that improve the sustainability of the system, leaving it better prepared for the future climate change impacts? So, breaking that down, is the system able to recover and grow into a better one? More resilient to climate-driven events, does it keep up with increasing climate variability and uncertainty, remaining sustainable? We've established what climate resilience is. It's being able to recover, resist and altogether put up and possibly become better from exposure to variable climate and destructive climate events. Understanding climate resilience is all well and good, but who is it useful to? And how do we know they are getting the best out of it? The answer to this all comes with a bit of context, some reference. Who's using it? Why are they using it? Where are they using it? Against what? We need to be able to define the socio-ecological system that we mentioned. So there are numerous systems that climate resilience can be implemented to. Uh, really simple ones, really complex ones, such as uh, agriculture, forest conservation, coastal conservation, fresh water, urban areas infrastructure, goes on. All of them are varying in scale and all require different methods to establish resilience. You can explain this quite simply with two examples. In developing third world countries, such as Kenya, you have massive problems with housing structures and housing inequality where annual flooding, storms or extreme winds can knock over these houses, meaning they are vulnerable to the environment and have actually lost their homes. So in this example, in order to build climate resilience, improve the housing, stronger foundations using cemented cinder blocks instead of loose bricks that are put together with mud. This example is very simple and probably exists sort of on an individual or a community scale. The second example is Phoenix, a big city in America, that is often exposed to droughts and extreme heat because of the dry climate. And because of that, they have a lot of issues with water management and how people can use water efficiently and in communal settings. In order to build a climate resilience in Phoenix, renewable surface water supplies and reserves in groundwaters have been implemented to extend water supply when droughts do come about. Comparing the two, Phoenix is a bit more of a complex issue, which involves a whole city and a whole culmination of individuals to work together in order to make climate resilience successful. Hopefully, using those two examples has put climate resilience into a sort of frame of mind that it can work on many different scales, from the individual to a country. In order to stay true to what we learned in the seminar, I'll talk a bit more about what Dr. Tripper said and what topics led on to throughout the seminar. We know what climate resilience is, but where do geoscientists come into it? And how does academic research lead into business? 
This is where Dr. Tripper, Ecometrica, and very similar data-based business models come in. By collecting vast quantities of climate data and sorting it into comprehensible forecasts, patterns, or predictions, Ecometrica and similar businesses can help countries, governments, communities, and individuals understand where they need to build climate resilience within systems in order to maintain sustainability. Why, Dr. Tripper argues, geoscientists are needed in climate resilience is that academic research alone cannot tackle environmental changes that truly impact on people's lives. And in fact, businesses that centre around solving these issues must be set up and created in order to maintain solutions for climate change as climate resilience. So geoscientists become important within these data business models because as academics, they can understand the problem, sift through the data because they understand te the technology behind it, see the patterns and apply their know-how within research to develop solutions to problems that face people in the real world. He argues that with geoscientists locked up in academic research, their ability to aid in problem solving and ultimately coming up with solutions can be lost when they start to delve into their own personal interests within academia, rather than what seems immediately, you know, helpful in the real world. In order to wrap up this episode, I'm going to talk about my takeaways from this seminar. Immediately, job prospects seem good for geoscientists. Obviously, the more businesses like Ecometrica, the more jobs there are for a soon-to-be graduate like me. What I find interesting from Dr. Tripper is his mindset on his business. He views his business as an effective way of tackling issues with climate. He understands that people don't have the information that they need in order to protect themselves from unexpected or persistent events that maybe they don't know how to deal with or are stuck on what they can do next in order to make their system better and more able to cope with detrimental impact on their system. He understands that there's a lack of information that is readily accessible to someone who is not a researcher or is not in a scientific field, but is in fact a farmer, a local government. So he believes that the way they collect data and then bring this down to comprehensible package is effective in building climate resilience and actually creating solutions for people who have problems with an ever variable climate. Thank you for getting to the end of this episode. Hopefully you've enjoyed it and hopefully you understand a little bit more about the topic that I've discussed. And if you'd like to learn a bit more about geoscience and geological and geographical frontiers in research, then I recommend continuing listening to the rest of this series. Thank you and goodbye.